Hi, I'm here with Nico Faslu. He's an internationally known artist and he's in Artists for a Better World. Thank you, Nico. It's great to see you. It is absolutely fantastic to be here, especially with my fiery friend, <laughs> red-haired gal. Wow, indeed. Thank you so much. And, and actually, it's all about you. How did you get started? At, how did you actually join Artist for a Better World? And why do you think it's important to have a group like that? Uh, well, first of all, how did I start art? Yes. Way back, actually. It started when I was um, in, we call it Standard 8 in South Africa. You see, Standard 8 and then Standard 2, 3, 4. That's your schooling. Uh, schooling, okay. yeah. And in um, Standard 1, the teacher used to call me and say, Nico, come up to the board and, and draw us a butterfly. Oh. You see, kids, now that is how a butterfly sort of, you know, uh, looks like. And... That gave me incredible um, um, acknowledgement. Confidence, too. And confidence. <laughs> you know, I was bursting with pride. <laughs> My God. And, well, from then on, that was my endeavor, is to create beauty. Oh, great. Aesthetics. I want to flood this planet with aesthetics. Perfect. You know, it is... So important. Exactly. So what about Artists for a Better World it, as a group? Well, you see, the thing is that if you isolate yourself, you start stagnating and um, there is no way to find out, you know, am I really doing top class work over here, you know? Am I sliding down a sluice box that's going to put me into the mud <laughs> <laughs> the other side? <laughs> so it's nice to have a group of people that's intelligent, you know, that is um, uh, compatible, you know, and that enjoys doing um, um, artistic, creative, aesthetic work like that. And that is... Uh, quality is right in the forefront. Yes. So you bring your artwork there, you know, and it is um, like checking it out. And you'll see, oh, no, they react this way, oh, they react that way, you know, and this one doesn't really get the reaction, and that one's really going. So that is what you pursue then, those that you get the, the most reaction. That is absolutely important to have that group and I found the group <laughs> thank you <laughs> exactly and all, look at this artwork it's so beautiful you have stunning powerful work and you did a lot of this in Africa in your home in South Africa while you lived there right absolutely I've, I've devoted most of my life into the mm. jungles of Africa where I um, contacted various races of black people, uh -huh. all in the raw, absolutely. And I had a whole assignment, for instance, like this was a whole calendar for um, Robert Hudson, who's an um, Australian company. Mm -hmm. I, uh, they commissioned me to do a Indigenous Dances of Africa. Wow and sent me into the, the jungles there. But luckily, I knew the languages, you know. Uh, wow. Okay, the Fukru Teta now again. Yeah, where? Oh! <laughs> you see, and then I'll go in there, and once I do this, then they'll smile, you know, and then they'll ask about this and ask about that. And it saved my life quite a few times. Whoa. Because I've had information. I, I trained under the, some of the witch doctors uh, in Africa. They, you know, concentrating on medicines and so on, herbal um, They have a lot of sway, don't they? Oh, unbelievable. So powerful. You know, if I say one word like that, they absolutely stand dead still. Turn around and then want to know, how do you know that? You see. Anyway, that is what 
took me through the deepest jungles like that. It's scary, you know, sometimes my hair was standing on end and my eyes were... But, you know, if it breaks down like this, they see that you have presents that you bring them and your um, whole goal is to enhance, you know, everybody like that. And, um, oh my goodness, then it became a great game and we had wonderful times. I can see that. Look yeah. at this. You have so many. Here, yeah, this is, is the Bushman one with the, with the first rains that come. They tear up the wow. old clothing and they put on then a new uh, skins and oh. so on. Sort of. It's very symbolic. Absolutely. And um, What's this one? Whoa. Uh, that's yeah, beautiful. That is the, um, the Amatosa is where um, they had the grass skirts and they had these symbols painted on them. Huh. And the symbolism here is that, you know, you come up to a certain age and then there's a total break. You are now an adult. Mm. There's nothing to do with dolls and things anymore. So you take all your, your, your playthings and they get burnt in a hut. You see oh, the flames yeah, in the yeah, back? Yeah. Yes, they're burned right there. Yeah. I can see the smoke. The smoke. And this gets burned. And this, uh, it is a total clean cut from childhood to adulthood. And now they take on responsibility. You know, they have to look after the cattle and make sure things don't go haywire or disappear. You know, <laughs> wow, but, that's so, really interesting. Yeah, I didn't is, know they did that. It is. And, and, and you see, you know, they will sort of play around. And then when they come out of here, they're proud. You know, they will stand up and they will... You can just see that they are adults. You know. I got it. I got and, it. And the father then will be, you know, proudly standing there, shake his head. <laughs> I can see why you wanted to capture that in their art. Yes, oh, absolutely. So, what do we have here? Whoa. This is, is that a monkey? Yeah, no, this is a monkey skin. Monkey skin. Yeah, Whoa, this, they put by it over the way, is the Velovicha, which grows in the, it only grows in the deserts, like the uh, Nama Desert down there, or the Kalahari Desert, for instance. Kalahari, okay. These are the Bushmen, you know, they, they wear these baboon skins like this, and then you can see he holds onto the foot, the feet of this guy, and that guy holds onto this guy's feet, and then they roll like that. Oh my God, they, they'd have like five people rolling. Yeah, no, no, no these are groups, groups of, you groups. know, either this group will roll, or that will singly roll, or that will just run like that. Wow. So they have a, a music, and they have this dance, like, and everybody sort of dances around this, but this is the main sort of thing. It's a very unique... What does it mean when they dance like this? Well, no, this is just joviality. You know, joviality, this good. This is fun. This is their fun. <laughs> this is the fun thing. This one? Uh, this one Whoa. is the Zulu Hinjamu, which is the war dance. War dance? Now, this one is um, very sacred. Oh, my goodness. You know, they would wear these. These are... I can see it on their feet. Yeah, these are uh, goat skin. It's like fur, like... Uh, it's a curly... Um, type of fur on, on, this, on the feet, the uh, nobkiris and the assegais, and um, the skirts and, and ostrich feathers. If you look closely there, that's one face. This ah. is the other face over there, and there's another face over there. So I like to capture movement. I love painting movement. Yes, and two-dimensional so you can make it look to, like it's moving. Absolutely. And you get all sorts of interesting little um, facets and so on in, inside it, it sort of captures your interest. Yes, and it I holds love that it, one. And it holds it Whoa. right there. Interest. Oh, what now is this that? is the Amaquedini. The Amaquedini is the younger guys, you know, of this tribe over here. Um, the Macos are here, of okay. this tribe. Okay. You see, it's the younger dance. That's the dance before this one. Oh, so the younger the, guys first and then the older... It, it be, yeah, ah. yeah. You see, and then they uh, stand in long rows like this. And the fire is down there and they dance all around like this, you know, sort of circulating, circulating the, the fire. Incredible. 
Well, that is it from Africa. You captured it, though. Yes, African tribal dances. What a wonderful experience that you've had. And I also heard that you have done underwater paintings, which boggles my mind, that you can paint underwater. Yeah, that... BBC took... Didn't they take a... What did they do? They yeah, took... um, BBC Television of London had their whole team with underwater cameras there with me at 30 feet below the ocean. Whoa. But we're jumping the gun. Why did I go and do that? Yeah, exactly. It is... Oh, my goodness. If you just know what it involved to get that, the dynamics of that to work. First of all, Um, You'll see the painting itself is quite large, like that. I had to prepare the surfaces on the painting itself where where the oil paint will only adhere then, because you can only use oil paint, of course. Gotcha. And... um, Water paint wouldn't work in water. Is is that right? (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Anyway, the whole thing started, you see these guys are uh, some of the witch doctors that I knew. This is the one of the ones that trained me. As they were telling people around them, you know, their um, their folks around them, that if you don't do this and this and this to us, you know, they're they charlatans. Some of them, they really are. Mm-hmm. And um, then the Abantu Bomlambo, which is the underwater people, will get at you. They'll do all sorts of horrible things to you. you this understand? is from the witch doctor telling his people? Yeah, Whoa. as I say, some of them are are not very... That's uh, where they get their power. That's exactly. And I, I told him, I said, hey, listen, that is not true. Those Abanta Lambo, the underwater spirits, you know, they not mean, you know, I'll go and talk to them and hold. He says, goodbye. We'll never see you again. You are as dead as a stick. So <laughs> I said, okay, you're on. So then I did the research. I did not know what I let myself in to at all at that stage. <laughs> all the research, you know, that went into it was, was awesome. Preparing the canvases, you know, to have waterproof the canvases and... And, and things like that. And I don't I even know how you did it. And hold the painting down there. Oh, it's, it's all with, with uh, uh, epoxies. Okay. With the canvases. And um, so <clears throat> that day I went down to the ocean. This a friend of mine. There was that friend of mine. And then I've, I've um, called in three um, Navy divers. Great. To help me hold this painting over here. Good. There is myself over there and the, the Navy divers and then BBC of London cameras and all that sort of thing BBC, around. Yeah, they've got a camera. Like that. And this is uh, my impromptu uh, talking about this whole thing with the BBC cameras over here and the sound men over here. Now, just before I went into the whole thing, and this is 30 feet under the ocean here. Wow. Actually doing the painting itself. Yep. And uh, these are newspapers and so on and so on. Anyway, I thought, well, it's just me and my friends are going to go down to the beach and then we'll just have a quick sort of a test and then come out. It leaked out. The whole thing leaked out into Cape Town. Wow. We came down to the beach and there was throngs of people and cameramen and video and goodness knows what, newspaper people and reporters. <laughs> I thought, oh my God, what did I let myself <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so um, all these shots was taken then at that time. The, um, it was so incredible to have this happen down there because you would float over the painting. There will be little crabs running over, you know, and, and, and so on. And then sand and shells would adhere inside the uh, thick oil paint that right. sticks onto the, the canvas like that. That all gives it character. Perfect, right. beautiful character. Right. 
and and um, my palette became so slippery it would slip out of my hand and go right because a wooden palette. Right. And then one of the divers will go right up and grab the palette and bring it down. <laughs> And I'll have BBC of London and, and other cameramen, you know, around, sort of swirling around while I'm doing the painting down there. Right. So, and, and the, the waves then take this, and it's actually like that. And then it will be like this and go up, and then I'll go down, and then I'll, my legs will go up, and I'll be upside down. And painting. And like... hanging down this <laughs> vertical doing the painting. The opposite of, like, what was happening with the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> that is like, right. Oh, my thing. God. And, but it was a grand, grand adventure. Absolutely fantastic. The next day it was all over the news and te television, uh, not television, um, um, on the radios and things like that. Did did um, did something happen with the the prophecy of the witch doctor? Because you said that you would prove. Yes. That now that is the most interesting. <laughs> I then came out of the water, you know, and right. the guys were sitting there, you know, and I sort of walked up to this, and I said, "Well, you see, I survived it. Down there, they're friendly. They're not all, you know." dangerous and, and angry and <laughs> if your heart is right and your intention is right you can do anything on this planet yep. they say no listen you didn't tell us the truth <laughs> I say why remember behind them is all the, the folks that's sitting there now they're getting this information you all know, the, all they the must say Africans. face. Yeah. They have to say face. Oh, now. I see. So, no, oh, you didn't tell us the truth. I said, why? You know, you for sure are some sort of a deity. <laughs> <laughs> you have powers that you are not telling us about. And it is the only way that you can go and face those. I say, no, I'm a, I eat hamburgers and I'm just a man just like you. He says, no, no, no. I see. So they turned it, tried to turn it around. They turned, they tried. <laughs> but I, I planted some seeds. Yes. I planted the seeds. The people saw it. And these guys will start thinking, you know, we're not robots. We can think now. You know, they're not just going to say, we want a, a ox now because we think that you've done wrong, you know, otherwise the... And then the, you can say, well, we haven't done wrong. And they could, you know, um, analyze the whole thing. Right, and they used to uh, use that to get riches or get food or whatever. The witch That's doctors right. would use that, and now That's they right. can't use that because people see that it's a, a lie yeah. to some oh, extent. Oh, absolutely. And... Yeah. Um, well, actually, you're doing you're a perfect art example of an artist for a better world because you're trying to create a better world for them Africans, to, exactly. so they don't have superstition. Exactly, this is my endeavor, right across the planet, right across all nations. Is if I could sow seeds, that could make them think, and regard the being next to them, the person next to them. The friend next to them. It doesn't matter what color. It is the friend next to them. Regard that and change it so that we are compatible and we could build a fantastic planet. I'm here with Nico Vaslu and he is going to go on and show us some actual paintings he did. He was actually, you were learning it but also teaching it. Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. No, um, I um, have a bachelor's uh, in art. Um, my college training in the uh, College of Art in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. there. So they were very strict and we really, you know, had to go and, and do very high quality things very quickly. I bet. And, um, but I enjoyed it. I see that you went from portraits. Yeah, it is portraits, and then from portraits to sculptures, actually. Oh, nice. Uh, bronzes, and then from there on to semi-abstract. Semi Let me just see here. Um, 
Oh, and you have some on the wall. We have some. That's right. You see, uh, so that is um, realistic to a degree, but there is some dream time into that, so that is not just a photographic. Right. You understand. Right. So it um, invites the observer to contribute to mm. that. You know, so you Good can point. see things and so on. So that brings it into the fine art cat category. Mm -hmm. And then from this, which is the absolute realism uh, in portraiture, pastel, like that, for instance, mm -hmm. then into a semi, and then a little further where you bring in um, fantasy of, of color in such a way that it really punches. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> and, it, and it really sort of draws you in there. Now, there is something that I have learned about color that I'll never forget. And it was actually discovered accidentally. If you have a certain red okay. and you have a certain blue next to it mm -hmm. and you tune this up, you bring it up, you bring up the blue a little brighter and the red a little brighter bring the blue down a little bit and then bring the red a little bit and then ping in ah. the middle there there is an unbelievable pulsing purple it just does this interesting it pulses your colors must be perfectly tuned so i think i'm going to capture this in all my paintings now this one I don't know whether you can see the glows that actually oh, yeah. uh, forms between the colors. So each inch on that has been tuned in to get that. The, the lighting is not, not right. and The lighting must be at 45 degrees to this. And you must stand at the same angle the light is coming in. Mm, good point. To get that full effect. The light comes in at 45, and that's where you stand and view the best viewing position. So, um, it is healing. That is the frequency which color therapy uses. That is the healing frequency. If you are in the city and you just worked a whole day and you're tired and you come home and you stand in front of a good painting that has this phenomena it drains it drains that weariness it lifts it really does that wow it's incredible I Incredible. That is why I love doing that, because I myself will go and stand there and enjoy this phenomena. You get the tune, tune just right. You tune it and you know, light you know when that, that neon light jumps. That's right, because light is um, yeah. a frequency and Absolutely. color frequency. is light. Exactly, exactly. <sighs> and if you strike the harmonic, of the, of the frequency of those colors, you know, it goes and then it just keeps on pulsing. Interesting. And um, it's, it's, it's very rare to get that in a painting right across the whole painting. This one's perfect. I love it. Whew. And then this other one of the zebras. The zebras, yeah, no, motion. You know, I love motion. And you can see wherever I, 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 I like, like um, this one too. Uh, this, for instance, yeah, these are da dancers. Um, this one too. That one, that's a, a very, very a musician. abstract. A musician with an instrument. That's right. This is the, the, the instrument over here. That's the hands. The arms, that is the face, the inspiration coming in through the hands, through the um, strings of the sitar, mm -hmm. and then the bubbles burst, the bubbles of information, of music, of beauty, aesthetics.
burst right next to it and give forth its nourishment to the world. Incredible. I love your whole... Well, that's not just a philosophy. You put it in action. I love to do that. I really, you know, you ponder the, the, um, oh. the information and then to try and capture it in, in motion. Yeah, that is a race car um, where you can really have uh, a lot of motion, you know, and all these little highlights. I love the little sparkly highlights mm -hmm. that roll around and just at random then, you know, give this sort of um, energy and, and, and aliveness and force and enjoyment. Abs and That's what it's all about. <sighs> it is. It is unbelievable, you know. Honestly, I love it so much. And I think we are so fortunate as creating... Uh, uh, people to be enveloped in this um, phenomena, blankets and blankets of color and texture and, and philosophies and, and, and fantasies and, and then select from that as you find you need to communicate mm, you know, yeah. to, your, to the people around you. Now there's a danger in that you know, you could find the information and you'll start creating. And you think, I need to, in, to enhance and to uh, research and so on. Go further and further. You can go too far and lose your public and lose the interest of those, those that enjoy the art that you have done up to now. Right, because you go too far and then they don't understand they it. They don't understand it anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, that is a great danger. So that is why Artists for a Better World is so good. I can test it again. Am I going too far? Too little, too little. <laughs> Absolutely. That gives you the thermometer of backwards and forwards of the whole thing. Would, how, what would, with someone starting out, what would you say to them since you've taught um, art as well, what would you tell art, other artists that wanted to paint and they really think either they think they can or they can't but they want to try? You know, um, I spent six years at the College of Art as a, um, a lecturer there so, mm -hmm. and the first second and third years uh, the first years would come in there and they looked frightened you know, and they mm. were overwhelming and all that they didn't know what to expect of the mm -hmm. whole thing. But it is quite strange that I, sometimes you'll find somebody that is great sort of aplomb, you know, that knows incredible amounts, thinks that they know incredible amounts, mm -hmm. come in there and they have virtually then in their mind established already, you know, all the art, uh, all the knowledge about art. But this little great guy that comes in there that is frightened, that is the one that you must watch. It is most strange because if I start then lecturing, this overwhelming chap would fiddle and not really. And this little guy here, you know, he'll say, you're right, you pays attention. Spit flying, you know, and it's really <laughs> tongue in the <laughs> sticking out. By the end of the year, you see a total dichotomy. The guy that thinks he knows everything, he has come up some, but not to the same um, um, standard that this little fellow has risen to. And, and honestly, galleries come then and select those first. Right. The ones that have really studied, really projected themselves and really consumed the knowledge. And it's really so nice to talk to them, you know, because they'll throw answers um, um, at, uh, at you and you will throw answers at them mm -hmm. and, and, and they will throw questions at you and you will throw questions at them. So we both learn from each other. Ah, and they're not afraid of just learning more and learning from other people. You see? Because they don't know it all. Exactly. Now, even the lecturers, it's very rare to have a teacher acknowledge what comes from that universe. It's a unique universe, the student, 
unique universe. Mm -hmm. You know, your universe is also unique. So, you put on the table, the universal table, what is from your universe and me from what is from my universe, and then we select from each other's. You don't enforce. Mm. You know, I see. That is the freedom, the respect for the selection of art that the student has selected. You cannot teach art to anybody. It's impossible. You are born with art. It is part of your makeup. All that the teacher could teach is technology. Right. It's only technology. How right. the heck do I paint uh, oils and, and how do I mix this and what sort mix of brushes do I um, How brushes. do I mix and to have, you know, uh, the color wheel, how to, to, to apply that and things like that. That's the only thing that you can teach. That's right. And That's right. Yeah. Even to a seven-year-old, my, my granddaughter. Exactly. I taught her um, just basic shapes colors, the complementary colors and the color wheel, and that's it. And she just goes and does her thing. She does beautiful work. And then they apply it. Yes. You see, and then they apply it to that, <laughs> you know. And um, so you just sort of guide them in their own their own style. Perfect. So um, I had a great time. The, the students loved, you know, we really had a great affinity between each other. And we looked forward to come to class every, every day. Exactly. It's not the old stoic fellow there with his pipe and his newspaper that sits <laughs> there. Now, he's supposed to be a lecturer, but he will give a, a task to the students. Go and read his newspaper, and that is it. I had to walk around and around and around. Talk. <laughs> and it was a great fun. Oh, great. Thank you so much for giving us that bit of real good advice. And I hope everybody's listening, because I know there's so many people that really want to be able to paint or do some form of art, and they just don't know how or what to do. And in painting, you gave a... Very good tips. Yeah, no, honestly, it's, and, and you have to be very respectful of yourself. Ah. It is vital that you really look at what you come up with. It is vital, vital, vital. You're not painting for the critics. That's right. You are creating something that's going to vacillate between you and your public. So those are the two entities that is very, very important. You find out what the public likes, mm -hmm. and, 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 and then you compare whether it fits in to what you like. And this is how you create your own public. Right, because it you could see, be just a certain people, but that would be the perfect people for your art. For that type of art, right. you see. And they will grow that way. So nobody is forcing anything on anybody. Mm -hmm. It is just a natural, beautiful flow of both sides. And we're creating into this gray world. You know, we have to whip out that that <laughs> brush, you know, and, yes. and say, on guard! <laughs> now, here we have to put color right. and power yes. and beauty and positiveness into this grayness that's seeping into. So, let's all stand together, shoulder <laughs> to shoulder. <and laughs> I love it. I, that's what you, a lot of our groups do, and ours is one of them. Also, you, I noticed that you help those that are less fortunate, because this is... It's a raised surface, and you use it for the blind? Yeah, no, these are, um, wow. it's um, tactile uh, blocks for braille schools, or blind sc schools, and braille so schools. on. Yeah, so um, I had an incredible experience down in Cape Town. I had an exhibition, and um, there were two guys standing at the door, 
they didn't seem interested. The rest of the public enjoy the power of the colors and everything like this. Mm -hmm. So I came up to them and, and asked them, you know, um, are you guys uh, waiting for something? They say, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, our, our friend is just just quickly wanted to go and have a look at some of the art, you know, and then uh, we blind and we standing here and um, okay. we're waiting for them to, to come back. What? I thought, my God, just a little more effort from the artist. You just take your painting and raise it a little bit. Mm, you can bring this whole facet that has always been put to the side mm -hmm. somehow. Bring them right in and make them part of our, the surge of beauty. Excellent. And I um, did a series of paintings and I took them to the Braille schools and so on in Cape Town. Okay. We exhibited them there and the little kids came along and they touched. Whoa, Johnny! This! This is an elephant, and it's got a long. This is this trunk that long. Whoa! Feel this ears. It's so big. It's really this big, and the teeth they stick out in front. It is the weirdest, weirdest animal. Remember that they right. have created all sorts of monsters in their minds yeah, they, about. They don't know. They could stick teeth sticking out all over the place and so on. That is immediate reality. Right. Immediately they know exactly what an elephant looks like. And that absolute glee of wonderment, you know, of uh, we have gained something. We have gained total, secure knowledge. That's right. It's secure. It's and not ifs, buts, and you know, maybes, maybes. It's secure. And you're doing something even here in America with um, with the Braille. That's, that's yeah, right. And you're trying to get some notice. And I I wish you all the best because this is really important. Because I think there's like two million blind people in the United exactly. States. Exactly. Exactly. Now, if we could yeah. sort of bring them in in such a way to show them the reality of, of the um, material around them, sort right. of thing. So they don't have to guess. No, they, they, exactly. They know just from the tactile. Whoa. Precisely. So this is a tactile kit. I'm going to have four of the uh, rough skin animals, for instance, the elephant, the rhino, the crocodile, and the hippo. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have another uh, set of uh, tactile um, learning kit blocks. Mm -hmm. of, let's say, the, um, the wonders of the world, for oh, instance. Oh, Eiffel Tower. Eiffel, exactly, the, and the pyramids and, right. and Taj Mahal, you know, and all that. Mm -hmm. And then of the planets or whatever. So if they have mm -hmm. a lesson, then they'll pass this along, you understand, and then when the teacher gives them the lesson and then they could feel and get the total reality of, of that. Right. Now, I'm, I'm hoping to create these kits and then have them distributed across the planet. Excellent. Great, great. It's perfect for Artists for a Better World because it, it's one of the things that creates a better world. And everything that you're doing is um, actually aligned with that. Excellent. Good. Love it. Just love it. <laughs> Thank you so much.